Hey YouTube, how is it going today? Well, I hope you're all having a great weekend so far. In this video, I want to go over all the stocks that I'm going to be looking at this week, and there are a ton of them. So trading stocks this week could be like shooting fish in a barrel because there are a lot of great looking charts. And then at the end, a few of you had some questions about some companies, so I'm going to go over those charts as well. Now, if you're new to my channel, I like to invest and trade in typically lower price stocks and talk about all other things finance related as well. If that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing so you don't miss any future trading or investing ideas. But please remember, I am not a financial advisor, so please do all of your own research before investing in any of these stocks. All right, guys, there are a lot of charts I want to go over, and I know everybody is ready for the big game. So I'm going to try to go through these super quick so I don't take up too much of your Sunday. But um, the first one I want to talk about is CSCW. I actually bought some of this one and pulled back to the 8-period exponential moving average right around 91 cents is where I got in. And it looks poised to break up out of this consolidation. Got all that big volume coming in and it looks poised to destroy this resistance area and head higher so like i said i'm already in this one because i absolutely love this pattern and um, it hasn't taken off just yet so um, i think it's a great time to consider cscw and uh, like i said i have a ton of charts to go over so make sure you write these all down and pick the ones that best suit your trading style because i think you're going to find a lot of nice looking charts but the next one i want to go through is b-o-r-r Guys in the Patreon have been talking about this one. This one is in the oil and gas sector, and we are um, extremely bullish on the sector. Just starting to see a lot of great looking charts, and you've got um, oil itself starting to trend higher, uh, really consistently higher for oil. So I think oil um, could certainly be going up for many, many weeks. Um, you know, seasonality, the summertime is the best time for oil. So I, I think that uh, oil could certainly trend um, up, up until the summertime, and then you could get that extra added boost. So now is not a bad time to be entering some decent oil stocks, in my opinion, of course. But uh, B-O-R-R -R looking super well. It's above um, all of these moving averages at the moment, and it's starting to uh, swing higher. Um, it's getting above this resistance area right around a dollar so if it can hold above a dollar and then uh find some more support at that eight period exponential moving average and start to push higher i think b-o-r-r -R would be a fantastic uh play to the upside let's go to the next one which is b-i-s-l b-i-s-l is making a very nice rounding bottom um we see we have a reverse split back here in august and that is usually uh, one of my rules is I don't like to trade stocks that have had reverse splits too close, but the market is so hot right now, I'm going to waive that rule for the moment. I usually like to have the reverse splits be at least a year old because uh, historically for me, if they've been too close to the current move, the, the move tends to fizzle out more. So I usually just eliminate that signal altogether if there's a reverse split. But I'm going to keep VISL on my radar because it is a very nice rounding bottom. Tons of volume coming into this stock, and it is just starting to bust out higher. Right about uh, $3.66 at the moment. It was up 38%, so I would like a pullback. Um, I like to enter these stocks intraday when they pull back near the 8-period exponential moving average. I try not to buy them when they're too extended. Um, in this market, things have been screaming. So, I mean, you're, you're getting away with it a lot more when you're buying stocks when they are extended. But typically, I don't like to do that. But um, BISL looking super good at the moment. Let's get into the next one. Um, the guys in the Patreon were also talking about this one. That was a great find. We actually traded this one back on this breakout in... Um, Probably late November. I think we got out right around, I got out personally right around 350, I think, maybe 344 if my memory serves. Um, of course, the stock um, only came, pulled back just a tiny bit from that resistance area and it blasted right back through it. It's been pulling back, making a very nice bullish flag and is starting to round up. And whenever you see these formations happening and you are, you know, right around this part of it, you can see it's starting to round up. That's when you want to go intraday. You want to go on the 15 minute chart, or that's at least what I like to do. Uh, let me put the chart back to where it was. Go to that 15 minute chart. 
and you start you get a better look at what that rounding bottom is starting to look on the intraday level and then you wait for that bust out you know those lows start rising up and then once it breaks through that resistance area and uh, starts to stay above it you know that's when you know all signals are go plenty of volume coming in on this breakout so it's very healthy let's go back to the daily for a minute um, just a great looking chart you 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 and that's energy fuels incorporated next one i want to talk about is s p c b i'm talking a little fast here so i might uh mix up a couple of words here and there and i probably won't even catch it so if i do say something that kind of doesn't make sense it's because i'm just going a little bit too fast but um s p c b um, already had I already had the resistance area drawn on this one. It busted through it, and I would love for it to come back and uh, find support at that eight period exponential moving average right around a dollar fifty, maybe a dollar fifty five. That's when I would like to buy it because there's tons of volume coming into this stock. Very nice rounding bottom. Um, just a beautiful pattern. Little extended for me. That's my disclaimer. You know, it's a little bit extended, so I'd like to buy it on that pullback. But a great stock to be watching for this next week. Um, next one I want to talk about is MRIN. This one is a little bit extended as well. I also do have my uh, resistance slash support area drawn on it, which I would love to see it pull back here to about 255-ish. I would love to enter right around that area, and that's not too far down. It was up 20% on the day, despite um, being up a lot higher intraday. But um, if this thing can get back to that eight period exponential moving average, that's when I would really like to be interested in uh, taking a position because it is a little bit extended for me. Now, I know in this market, everything is kind of hot. So, um, you know, if you buy things that are a little bit extended, you're, you're getting away with it a little bit more than you would in a normal market. So, I mean, if you want to, if you're comfortable with taking that risk and buying when things are a little bit extended, you know, that's up to you that's your trading style but i personally like to um wait for those pullbacks because it just reduces my risk um and makes it a, just a safer entry anyway let's go to the next one it's adil adil uh, same story i'm uh, just starting to make a nice uh, rounded bottom busting through this resistance area which will now be potential support if it can come down and test it and jump right back up this one right around the same area but i love to be an I love to enter right around 245-ish if it can pull back to that area. But, um, you know, this was an absolutely huge volume day normally for this stock because the stock normally trades. This was over 90 million shares that day. But this, nor this stock normally trades about 500,000. And uh, you can barely see the volume that came in on Friday, which was uh, 2.7 million. So you're talking 2.7 million versus an average of um, well, right around 600,000. So a a huge amount of volume coming into this stock lately. I know when you back out, <laughs> these kind of like almost disappear because that was such a big day. But trust me, there is a lot more volume uh, than normal coming into ADIL. So that one is definitely one that is worth watching. Next one I want to go over is MEIP. MEIP has a lot of volume coming in making a nice rounded bottom formation and it is busting through this resistance area right here so if it can pull back near that resistance area that's another stock that i would be interested in buying of course this is a biotech so biotechs can really start moving you know if this thing does come down to that average it might only be there just for a second or two so you got to be ready to buy if that's your area on MEIP. And this one also might not even pull back because these biotechs can really fly. But uh, MEIP, very nice looking pattern. Ooh, there's Studio. Hold on, buddy. All right, let's get back to the video. That was somebody from the Patreon with a question. Um, let's get to RNWK real networks i don't know if any of you guys were around trading in the 90s but i was and this thing was a high flyer it's, um i want to say this thing had to be well over 100 back in the 90s right now it's just busting out almost to three dollars a share in fact let's go down memory lane real quick let me see how how high that the, yeah it was back in the late 90s this thing was it split right here two for one and that was at 380 well, well, I guess we've had a reverse split back here. 
Um, so I know this thing was well over 100 bucks back in the late 90s, but um, oh, have the mighty, how the mighty have fallen from uh, that internet bubble. And a lot of them are, if they're not, if they're not completely gone, they are hanging out right around at these lower levels. But um, let's go back to the daily chart. Anyway, Real Networks is starting to make a nice rounding bottom, and uh, it is already starting to blast off. I was watching this last week when it got above the eight period exponential moving average. And uh, when it popped back above it and it started this move up, I did not get in on it, but very healthy looking chart pattern at the moment. If you can get a pullback to the eight period exponential moving average and potentially touch this uh, resistance area right around 255, that wouldn't be a bad entry at all. Um, let's go to the next one, which is any ANY. We can see ANY is forming this nice rounding bottom and starting to pull out of it. I think um, this one is a little early, so I wouldn't be a bit surprised if it does pull back. Um, usually, um, once they get over this 200 period simple moving average, they kind of meander around a little bit before they explode, but you never know. ANY is looking strong and there is a lot of volume coming in. Um, so ANY is definitely one you want to keep your eye on. Let's go to the next one is ASTC. ASTC has a had a very nice uh, base and is starting to round up. It is just barely getting above the 200 period simple moving average at the moment. And sometimes they like to wrestle around with those major moving averages before they get above it. So I would like to see it break a little bit higher and then uh, consolidate at the upper levels um, while these moving averages catch up before I jump in ASTC. But that could happen this week. It could happen next week. So it's definitely worth one, uh, definitely worth putting on your watch list to see if it makes that formation. Because if it does make that, it certainly could be moving higher. Um, let's go to CTRM. CTRM is already starting to blast off. This is a, a, a Castor Maritime. Some of the guys in the Patreon have been talking about uh, this sector. They were talking about this sector like weeks ago and uh, how bullish it was looking. And these things are just already starting to explode. But this is one that's a little long on the tooth, but I want to show it to you anyway, because when you're buying a stock that is extended, this is how I like to do it. Once they get extended and they start holding those highs, and then they stay up there till that eight period exponential moving average pulls up to it. I like to buy them when they touch that line. And a lot of time you will get this. Uh, that's when the move, the next leg up will start. So this is picture perfect how I like to enter a stock that is extended. This is the only time I like to buy at these extended levels. If it's not a deep pullback, I like to wait until that eight period exponential moving average catches up to it when it's consolidating at that upper level. But uh, let's get to the next one, which is job, which is get a job, J-O-B. Uh, I already have my resistance level drawn on the chart, but it's making a nice rounding bottom and starting to test that resistance. If it can bust through this resistance area, it could be off to the races for J-O-B because this is a very bullish pattern. And uh, all, of, all the moving averages are starting to round up. So uh, very, very nice looking chart pattern in J-O-B. Um, another stock in the oil sector is USWS. And this one is forming a very bullish uh, flag at the moment, starting to round up. But we can see that this thing has been consolidating and being accumulated ever since the pandemic lows. And now it is starting to explode higher. And that's mainly because um, the oil, and oil is uh, starting to trend higher. And that's going to drag a lot of these oil penny stocks. I was talking about these stocks way back last November and December, saying that they are starting to look very bullish. And now they are starting to... Um, turn into uh, the trend acceleration phase. So this is when, you know, this is what you're waiting for after you see those rounded bottoms and um, the trend starts to accelerate. This is when the big gains usually come. So USWS looks super good at the moment. Next one I want to show you is WTI. This one is also in that same sector. Look at that beautiful rounding bottom and just starting to bust above this resistance area. So this is just at the beginning point of the potential uh, trend acceleration. This is when you want to take your chances because um, it always it always could turn around and um, you know bust through these moving average, and that's when you uh, want to you know place your place your uh, stop limit order you know and reduce your risk. But um, this is also when it has the highest chance of exploding. So you have all this upside 
and this limited downside. Say if it broke down and below this 50 period simple moving average right around 238, that's probably when I would want to get out. I'd probably place my stop around 234 if I was in this thing, which I am not. But if I was in it at this price, I'd probably place my stop right about 234 and I would look to sell off part of my position once it got up near this old high of 397. So you can see that risk and reward is definitely in the favor that better suits you when you look at this pattern. Anyway, um, let's get into the next one, which is Fury. Fury is in the gold sector. I expected gold and silver to have a little bit more uh, of uh, upside, especially after um, the whole Reddit um, you know, story about how they were piling in silver. I expected to have a little bit more follow through because um, gold had been pulling back and uh, silver was making a bullish formation. So I figured it was probably time for gold to take off and gold hasn't taken off just yet. But Fury is making a very bullish pattern. So um, Fury hasn't been traded very long. You know, it came public back in October, but he still has a nice consolidation busted above that resistance area and it is holding it. If gold was looking more bullish than it is right now, I would be much more interested in fury, but you still cannot deny this pattern. This is a very bullish pattern. And if gold and silver does start moving higher again, um, I'm going to look to get into this one if it's still strong. But fury is a very nice looking pattern at the moment. Um, let's get into NSPR. NSPR, if I back out just a little bit, we can see this one has been making a nice rounding bottom. It's holding those consolidation highs with all this volume pouring in, and now it is starting to start busting higher. And it's only an 82 cent stock. So, I mean, this one could really get going. But NSPR is definitely one worth watching for this week. All right, the next one I want to get into is I had a question from Santiago. He asked me if I would look into INPX for him. So let's take a look at INPX. He was he really liked this formation, but he was concerned about this reversal that it had on massive volume. And uh, Santiago, I would be concerned as well. I do love this pattern. Uh, let's go intraday and see when most of that volume came in. Let's go, let's go to the five minute chart. And it looked like it was pretty consistent coming in towards the end of the day after this move up. Uh, actually, that was the day before. So this is the day when it gapped up. It was pretty, it was pretty consistent selling. You know, normally if that just happened all in, say, a 15-minute period or so, and then it subsided, I would wouldn't be as worried about it. But it looks like it is um, was consistently selling off for some reason. It's indicating that it's going to open up slightly higher on Monday. Of course, anything could happen. Um, by Monday, so I don't really take much uh, president into, precedence into this opening uh, slightly higher or indication that it could be opening slightly higher. <sighs> but INPX, honestly, I wouldn't be too worried if I was in it. I'm assuming you are in it, Santiago. Um, it's still holding above these um, moving averages and it's still trending higher. I would just want to see how the market digests um this recent selling if we have another big down day where it gets below that eight period exponential moving average and holds below it especially if volume is higher i don't know i probably would be packing up shop and looking for a better opportunity because there are just so many great looking charts at the moment um there's no need to be uh, wasting too much time in a stock that looks like it could be under distribution i mean i do love this pattern um I would give it another day or so just to see. And if it busts below that eight period exponential moving average and holds below it, especially on volume, um, I think I would head for the hills, Santiago. Hope that's uh, what you wanted to hear. Probably isn't, but I'm uh, just trying to be honest. All right. And I had another question from the roof man. My brother-in-law is a roofer. I used to call him the roof man. But uh, he wanted me to check out GNUS. GNUS, so Genius Brands International. Um, I had actually looked at this one last week when it had that huge up move, but then when I had that huge turnaround, um, I kind of took it off my watch list because that is not what you want to see. It is still holding that 21 period exponential moving average. So um, it's, this one's a little tough because 
you know, it did sell off very fast on uh, above average volume. So this kind of looks like a fake out at the moment. Um, the, the lows are still rising. So I guess if I had to guess, um, I think this one is probably going to meander sideways for quite a while. Once you get a big update and then a huge reversal, it usually takes some grinding around for it to build up enough momentum to start the uptrend again. Um, if I was in this stock at the moment and it busted below um, this 50 period simple moving average um, right around $1.55, I would just, you know, get out of the trade and go look for something else. And if this thing later on, you know, started to get back above those moving averages and start gaining momentum again, I could always get right back in. But um, if it starts to bust below these moving averages, there's no risk. There's no point in putting any more of your uh, hard earned money at risk. Um, just look for a better opportunity. If you believe in this company for the long term, um, then perhaps, you know, if it busts below those moving averages, that's a time that might be a time for you to add. And, you know, I don't know a whole lot about Genius Brands, so I can't really comment too much on their long term potential. But um, that's my thoughts on Genius. But he also wanted me to look at Sundial and I have been watching this one quite closely. Now, this one is more like it because SNDL is definitely what I love to see. I love to see. That volume pouring in like this and holding near the highs after a big move up. That is showing you the underlying strength of the people that are holding this stock. Once you get a huge gain like this and um, the sellers don't start pouring in, you know, people don't want to start ringing the register just yet. That means that there's a very good possibility there is more to come. But uh, Sundial Growers, in my opinion, is looking super strong. I think it is poised to touch this eight period exponential moving average. Hopefully it finds support at it and that will start the next leg up because we got this choppy trend right now, you know, and right now it looks like it is poised to make a low right on top of a previous high and then start exploding higher. Once the stock starts moving up like this and pulls back, makes a new high, pulls back into below the other high, it's a creeping, grinding type of trend. But when it explodes higher and then it makes the previous um, high, it does not break below that. That's and it, and it finds support and starts to move back up. That's when it. That's when you have a better chance of the trend accelerating to the upside. So that's when I like to get really excited. Is when I start seeing one of these grinding trends, and then the next low comes down and it touches an old high and does not break below it. If it touches that old high, starts to move back up. You know the saliva starts to drip down the side of my mouth because it's going to be and there's a very good possibility you're going to have a big winner um but those are the ones that i wanted to show you guys i'm sorry if i went super fast you might have you might want to go back and play it back at half speed so you could understand what the heck i was talking about but i didn't want this video to drag on too long i just wanted to show you all these opportunities but uh that's the video for this week all right, guys, well, that's all I have for this one. But if you have any questions or comments on any of these stocks, please don't hesitate to leave them down there in the comment section, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, please hit the like button if you enjoyed the content, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, so don't miss any future trading opportunities. Um, thank you so much for watching my video all the way to the end, and until next time, take care, everybody.